Hey everyone, welcome to another video on Blender Geometry Nodes. In this video, we will see about Raycast node. I release new videos on a weekly basis. Please subscribe to my channel so that you will be notified when I upload a new one. This is Jay from CJ Academy. Let's start. Okay, I have the default cube here. Let's create a geometry node and rename this to Arena because we are going to see how different objects behave in request node so let's bring request node and i don't need this so we'll keep the grouping we'll keep the group input somewhere else okay what is request node so if you see there is a geometry input but there is no geometry output so this is clear there is you cannot view something out of request node so it has to be always always used in a, another geometry context okay so let's bring in some basic geometry shapes let's bring in cube and icosphere so we need two objects here because a raycast node say takes a target geometry so if there is a target there has to be a source okay very simple so target means wherever the rays will fall on that is the target and so let's say this cube is the source for this to connect you need something on this geometry context usually any of the geometry operation you do like delete geometry see or any of the geometry operations so there was one for extrude so that is a mesh operation let's go for mesh operations so extrude flip mesh boolean anything let's go for extrude mesh and connect we have not connected the raycast yet so what is happening here is just takes the cube each each phase individually extrude that's it by one but this is is hit okay the red cast node takes an input and it gives these are the outputs so the first output is is hit it's a boolean value whether it is hit or not the source geometries rays whether hit the icosphere or not is the value of this so it's always a boolean is nothing but whether you have selected something or not selected or not selected so this is naturally a connection for the, the selection socket any of the selection socket you can use it so what's happening here is the source cube rays falling on to the icosphere the target geometry and it is evaluating whether it is hitting or not based on that this extrude should happen so there's nothing happening let's see why bring in the transform geometry shift d and duplicate add it to this as well let's move this outside okay so you can see already there is some difference happening okay why because this is somewhere hitting at this y value okay but to see it you need a joint geometry because right now we are we have connected only the source source geometry to the output so we have not added the target geometry yet so target geometry is the icosphere icosphere is not visible anywhere let's bring it here shift right click take the information from here okay connect it here add this to joint geometry okay now you can see so the difference what was happening is as it touches the cube that's where the rays are hitting because the ray direction is in minus z axis z axis is this way so whenever any of the rays that is touching usually the top top end of the top part of the cube is touching so it's hitting the icosphere then this extrude is happening now let's little bit fine-tune the result so now if you see the translation is in y axis positive so let's make this zero make this is y as one i don't see any but you if you notice if i go for zero i go for one so definitely the rays are hitting but the extrude is happening on all the faces okay but there is no difference why because there is no subdivision 
to show you the difference so we need two things here one this source geometry should be bigger than this then only we can see some difference so let's go for five times of the source geometry okay and let's bring this little bit out okay in y-axis and positive y-axis and subdivide this okay further subdivide mesh you can put it here or here that's not sure what difference does it make uh, if you know let me know in the comment section now subdivision is also done let's move this along z-axis you see the difference it was not happening because at that moment there was nothing no point was hitting no rays are hitting it so that's why if you subdivide one step further you can see there is a difference so if i go for this way you can see okay now i have moved or uh, in increased the subdivision you can see more extrude is happening okay you can see so if i go for one more it's giving almost the same icosphere shape not exactly the same but that's how it works so if i go for x-axis you can see how it is behaving so this is how in general it works if you want to see what or uh, how this rays are going we need an instance on points in that case to show you the rays how, how in which, which direction it goes so to show the direction you need curve line okay curve line will point out which direction it goes because it has the same parameters as the raycast node it has a direction it also has a direction is it length is there here also length is there we can control to both together put it here and take this subdivision after the subdivision take this input shift right click as the point source okay and bring it to the joint geometry now it is all in z axis because you can see the direction here is z now if i match this and this together so here in y axis it is one so i'll move this to zero and add this to one you can see this is how the difference is and so ray length is 100 meter and put here also 100 and this is exactly what is happening so 100 is not required so let's reduce this to 20 move this here also 20 still too much right yeah let's change it to 10 yeah 10 is reasonable here also we'll move it to 10 so 10 if you can see these many rays are going in but whatever is hitting is very less only these amounts that's why you see the difference and there is some extrude happening mainly because of that so if i subdivision if i reduce it zero so there is no rays hitting so there is no extrusion happening now also one is hitting but that's not enough to extrude f phase if you want to extrude extrude a vertice let's see control all right click you can see if you want to extrude a vertice it's happening and if say let's say five you can see and if i move now the target geometry along the z axis so whichever point is hitting it will hit if i move the along the x axis now if we increase the subdivision here see now I'll move again to Z axis. So whichever rays are hitting, that rays are extruding. But extrude vertices is not that useful. So let's go for the face again. Oh, sorry, face again. You can see the difference now. So how many rays are hitting, how many that many faces are extruding. So you see the difference now. So what is raycast node actually doing is in a overview I can say it takes the source, okay this is where the ray is coming from this is where the rays are coming from and target geometry is what used just to detect which rays are hitting how many rays are hitting but the result effect is still happening in the source okay still happening in the source the normal assumption is you have a source you have a target usually the rays should 
affect the target but request node works in a different way it takes source it takes the target but the effect is not on the target it's always on the source because you take this information from the target and you cannot plug it in again on the target so it will be like self-referencing itself so it's it doesn't work that way always happening in the source geometry approach the request node you always think wherever the source there will be the effect okay so this is like a feedback loop so you send the arrays and take a feedback and then resulting information is fed into the source geometry itself not on the target geometry target geometry is not affected at all okay now to uh, see this in a bit for meaningful way let's bring in different geometries so uh, i don't see a susan here recently re realized there is no monkey in the primitives so let's add it from here i hope i'm wrong this is how uh, the grid node also i found out that there is a plane i don't see a monkey but if there is a monkey somewhere hiding in the geometry nodes list please let me know in the comment section let's go back to arena so you can any geometry you have in the 3d viewport or in the scene collection you can bring it to the geometry node section by just drag and drop it is already selected the susan now susan will be the target geometry okay because we want to project the susan's uh, information okay on the source geometry now let's hide this one and bring for the source for the source let's bring uv sphere okay that's it will have a good number of subdivisions it's easy to show you also uh, now you see the difference so it's already working now what i have done is taken a uv sphere exp uh, enlarged by five times subdivided four times it's reduced to subdivided to two times and then this is just for rays if you want i can enable this again and see so just to show you how the rays are hitting i'll just disable it again okay and the source geometry's rays are hitting the susan okay the monkey and based on the movement of this you see the extrude is happening now extrude you can control all the options here so it's because five times it's like that but if you reduce it you can see much much better and if i subdivide more here then more rays will hit that means more clarity on the susan information so if you see okay so susan is just behind the 3d viewport our view increase you can see there is a fine shape now because more rays are hitting the Susan monkey. By controlling the ray direction and the ray length, you can get any kind of output you want. Remember, raycast node is always cast the rays on the target geometry from the source geometry and make some changes or effect based on this hit information on the source geometry. I repeat, on the source geometry, not on the target geometry. If you understand this aspect, raycast node will be easy. Instead of extrude, you can use delete geometry. This is always simple. So whatever you want to do with this information of race, you can do, you're free to do. See, now it is cut, cut through it. So the ray length is minimum. So if I go for 100, then it should cut through. See, so this is how it works. Request node can be used for so many things. So it's more like a knife project in geometry nodes. You project something, but in this case, the result or the effect is always on the source geometry. The geometry context, wherever it is plugged in, it will give the effect. Okay. I'll just delete these. It's going to be confusing. So, so this will be. Source. Okay. This will be target. Target. be like cast and effect let's say ray casting ray and effect okay i hope this is clear now but if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section because 
I, I took some time to understand the Raycast node actually. It, it was not easy. But when, you, when once you know how, how it works, it, it was easier to manipulate it for many different things. For example, I can manipulate this direction with a position node. Maybe I'll just show you if you are a little bit interested in the advanced part of it. So let's I will bring in position node. Okay. Now if I plug this position node, it takes this particular target geometry's position information. Okay. This is position is a read geometry read node. So I have covered about this in a separate video. I can share the link in the description. You can check. So you see wherever the Susan is located all the rays are converging to that particular position so when i bring the susan closer you'll get a bigger output you see and if i move out you get a smaller result because all rays are converging to this particular location and it is small and that's also giving that effect if i move it big you can see and more further i move out after a while you don't get it okay because the ray, ray length is 19 and we have already moved out of it I'll keep to 100 and you can still see the effect is there hmm. you can see the effect is there if I move it closer see it's enlarging it's more like bringing in this information and if I unplug this then the result will be same irrespective of the y-axis value but when I plug the position you can see there is interesting thing happening it's more like you are um, you can make this as a effect for uh, you know falling off falling on a falling on an object effect because when it uh, it's more like a shadow you see it's more like it's working like a shadow yeah so a lot of things you can do you can play around with this i just explained only the uh, is hit the boolean value now you have hit position information you can use it for any other uh, um, aspect hit normal the hit distance so ray length is 100 okay and uh, y and uh, susan is at around 11 meter and you have this 11 meter information and also based on the object different place the length might vary a little bit and that information is in the hit distance attribute if you want to uh, control it with any other attribute you can use it and there are many other ways to control it and that's fake s node you could spend time uh, days of time to explore it there are a lot of potential to it a lot of useful ways to utilize this raycast node that's it about the raycast node if you find this video useful please like it share it with your friends if you want me to cover any specific topic in blended geometry nodes please let me know in the comment section even if you have any questions about this raycast node i'm sure that might be some please let me know in the comment section as well please subscribe to my channel i'll see you in another cool video Thank you. Bye.